we've been talking a lot about the fact that the uh, state now has a budget, thanks to the hard work of the legislators, although they've gotten a lot of criticism from the left for being late getting it out. Uh, it looks like they got it right. I think you can agree with most of it anyway, and a lot of great things going on right now, including a bond referendum. Looks like we're going to get some uh, economic development money that way. And yesterday, the legislature compassed, uh, passed the long-awaited NC Competes bill, which is going to give us some economic development money through that J JDIG program that allows the uh, state to uh, recruit industry by bringing incentives uh, to people who are going to spend massive amounts of money and create jobs in eastern North Carolina and North Carolina, for that fact. Here to talk about that, our friend from the North Carolina House of Representatives, the co-chair of the House Finance Committee, Representative Jason Sane this morning. Good morning, Representative Sane. How are you? Good morning, Henry. I'm doing great. hope you are. You guys are in the uh, home stretch. I understand you're going to finally uh, end the legislative session on Wednesday. Is that right? Well, the end is nigh. There's even talk that we could close it out on Tuesday, and wow. I'd be just as happy. I'll bet you will. Uh, we had uh, Speaker Moore on yesterday. We talked a lot about the budget. Just a word about that, then I want to talk about some of these uh, other things that you that are kind of in your uh, wheelhouse, like tax the new tax reform package and the NC competes and uh, the bond and those kind of things. Are you happy with the with the uh, the way the the budget finished? I know there was lots of disagreements between the House and the Senate. Some on policy, some on spending. Uh, but at the end of the day, how do you feel about the way the budget finally shook out? You know, I feel I feel really good about it. And you know, an extended discussion is not a bad thing. Making quick, irrational decisions would be a bad thing. And I think we rightly said, "Hey, we're we're we are far apart on where we started. So let's take the time necessary, air out our differences." And sometimes it was painful, uh, particularly going through a long, hot summer when you wanted to be somewhere else. But I think we owed it to taxpayers to to, to do the right thing and have had the discussion and find a way to where everybody wins. And that's uh, that that's a real upside to all of it. When you take the time to, to do the hard work, uh, you find ways for everyone to get a win and where we're not hurting anybody. And that's I think that's most important. A lot of people on the left want to criticize uh, what's going on. A lot of times they make predictions that don't turn out. You know, we were told that that last tax package that you guys put in uh, uh, that was going to create a $600 million deficit. It ended up creating a $400 million surplus. So uh, I know or fifty, but who's counting? Yeah, <laughs> they just missed it by a billion. But, That's right. But uh, That's right. but but now a further tax cut. Uh, uh, people across, you know, we're getting ready to have a nationally syndicated radio host, Mr. Rod Eccles, coming in a second. I'll get his opinion. He's, you know, we we hear from people across the country that you guys are the ones getting it done because you're cutting taxes and creating, uh, you know, the kind of um, the, the kind of opportunities in the state that we used to see when uh, when we had lower taxes. And and I know that that's partially. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I, you know, having gotten to know you, I know that that's one of the things that you were hoping for are you happy with the way that the tax uh package went because you ended up with a lower income tax but you did create some new uh, sales taxes yeah, no, I'm, I'm very happy. And, you know, part of that is is a long-term goal of tax reform. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You can't do it all overnight because you're, you're you know, you're turning a very large economy a different direction. And it's it's like turning a big ship. You can't do it all at once. Uh, it takes time. Uh, if you did it all at once, you might end up doing too much too fast, uh, So, which was part of the debate as we, you know, back and forth with our colleagues, just how do you get there and how quickly do you get there? But, but the reality is when you do these things, when you you lower that personal income tax rate when you lower that corporate rate when you give you know North Carolinians across the state the opportunity to uh, uh, reinvest in our state and start new businesses and and to get back to work because that's the other thing is that you know when you create that kind of climate you lower the unemployment rate which we've seen that's something that was near and dear to me because matter of fact before I got here I was looking for a job uh, I know what it means to, to be sitting out there with 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 little hope when you when you've got folks in office who aren't doing anything to create opportunities opportunity and that's what we do we don't create jobs at the legislature we create opportunity and we're creating the right opportunity for business in north carolina and the left um you know they can criticize all they want to they've been wrong before they'll be wrong again i'm certain of it uh this plan 
you know, we, we're reinvesting. We're, we, we are being competitive with our folks uh, to the south of us in South Carolina, with Virginia, Tennessee. Uh, so there's, there, you know, no one likes incentives, but the best incentive, though, I'll tell you, is a lower tax rate uh, across the board, and we're doing that and still staying competitive and still offering some of the things that, that other states are offering. But as we get toward that goal of a, uh, you know, a, a no tax, you know, no, no personal income tax, eventually um, we will be one of the most attractive states, and you know, you know, in the United States, obviously, but really one of the most uh, attractive places to come in a global economy. And that's mm-hmm. the things we have to think about, and particularly, you know, in, in across the state. You know, it's not just your urban areas that will typically have growth, but we're finding ways and doing things that help, you know, your more rural areas uh, be competitive as well. Right. And, of course, that sales tax redistribution plan that Senator Harry Brown from here in eastern North Carolina came up with, it kind of got worked into this new sales tax. So uh, it was a great compromise, I think, for, for everybody. Let me ask you about, very before we have to go, the NC Competes bill finally – <laughs> After I know, you know, at the end of last year, end of 2014, Secretary of Commerce, the governor was screaming, hey, we're getting ready to lose opportunities here unless we put the pass this NC competes bill, which is the bill that allows uh, the Commerce Department, the governor, uh, other uh, state recruiters to bring industry to North Carolina. Nobody likes incentives, Representative Sane, but, uh, you know, everybody around us is doing it. You know, we just lost the Volvo deal to South Carolina, uh, and I know that uh, in eastern North Carolina, everybody was hoping that we'd look, you know, have a a fresh look from a new auto manufacturer. Finally, the NC Competes bill passed yesterday, and we have a pool of money to go recruit new industry to create jobs. Do you feel okay about the way that uh, got lined up? I do. I, I think it, you know, it requires you know counties uh, to put some skin in the game too, to have some matching funds. Um, you know, a dollar for dollar. If you're in a, uh, you know, in, in a in an economic area that that, that you know is worse off, um, and and you know, and then a match, you know, is kind of scaled depending on how well your county's doing. But but the most important thing is it allows us to be competitive. It does give the Secretary of Commerce and the Governor something kind of a trump card in their pocket to to always you know we, we've got the right economic climate. If we've got one more thing that could help bring that company to Eastern North Carolina or to Western North Carolina or wherever it may be, uh, they now have they're now empowered with that, and I think that's very important uh, it, because we we have to be competitive. It's a shame that we had to wait. We started the bill back in February, got it out I think in late February, March, something like that, and we've had to wait. But it might you know some things are worth waiting for, and I think we finally got it right, and we we got agreement from from our uh, friends in the Senate, and and have something that they can go out and 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 do the you know necessary business recruitment because we don't want to lose. I think everybody in North Carolina is as competitive as you or I might be, Henry, and and they want to see our state winning, and we don't want to be left behind. And I think this the, the NC Competes Act uh, gives us the tools that we need to be competitive. Well, thank you for all your hard work. Uh, I call you. I say this to you every time we talk. You are. Cl- clearly one of the rising stars in North Carolina politics, and you've been uh, a force to be reckoned with in this uh, in this uh, legislative session for sure. And uh, and I don't ever disagree with you, which is what I like about you, because I think you've, you're on the right side of these issues all the time. So I appreciate all that you do, and uh, congratulations on the budget. Congratulations on the... Um, the NC competes bill. We didn't talk about the bond. We're running out of time here, but the bond, we'll get to that another time. Looks like the bond okay. package is going to pass, and and we're going to have uh, some more economic opportunities that are going to pick up through that. So uh, good stuff, Absolutely. And, and we appreciate all that you do. Well, Henry, always a pleasure to talk to you, and, and thank you. We're, that bond package is going to reinvest in, in, our, in our higher education, our parks, and things that we need in this state, too. So I look forward to talking with you about that later. Okay. But it's always great to talk to you. Thank you, Jason. Nice talking to you. Representative Jason Singh, the co-chair of the House Finance Committee in the North Carolina Legislature.